What I have here is the Stella Vita device from TopTech. It's like the ACR from CW, but unlike the CW, which is only compatible with ZW accessories, the Stella Vita from TopTech is compatible with almost any camera or astrophotography accessory on the market. My name is Luis Miguel Azorín and I welcome you once again to Natural Portraits. In this video, we're going to review and put the Stella Vita to the test with a camera and with astronomical objects that are out of the ordinary to really see how it performs and whether it's capable of dethroning the ever-present ACR. If you're one of the few who still doesn't know what this Acer thing is, and now Stella Vita, let me sum it up for you. Asir from ZW is the device that has revolutionized the world of astrophotography, allowing us not only to connect all our device main camera, auto guiding system, electronic focuser, filter wheel, mount. That is, all our astrophotography equipment connects to a single device that also supplies power to all of them and lets us control our entire astrophotography session wirelessly via Wi-Fi, using a tablet or our mobile phone. A true revolution in the way we do astrophotography with just one drawback. ASIR only works with devices from the ZW brand. So it was to be expected and it's actually taken quite a while for this to happen. Either ZW would eventually open up its system to other brands or other brands would end up launching the same product, but compatible with any brand and model of device. And that's what's the Vita from TopTech. If we compare Stella Vita with Asir, it looks like we're seeing the same device in a different color. In the box, we find a set of components similar to what comes with Acer. We find the device itself, along with a quick start guide, a set of 12 volt power cables of different lengths, and a USB 3.0 cable. In addition to this small USB connector, which I'll talk about in a moment, this Lavita is slightly larger than the Acer Plus version, and they're almost exactly the same height. As for the layout of the connections, it's almost identical. On the antenna side, we find the on-off button. There's the 12 volt power connection and a reset button, as well as the antenna itself and the LED lights that indicate the device's operation. Next, we find a slot for an SD card. In the case of ASIR, it was for a smaller SDTF card and a USB-C connection, which in ASIR is used to connect the device to a computer, but in the case of Stella Vita, it is not yet enabled. Perhaps it has been installed for future device updates. On this side of ASIR, we also found some threads that allow us to attach accessories, something we don't have on the Stella. Next, we find the USB connections and the Ethernet port. We have two USB 3.0 ports and another two USB 2.0 ports, with the difference that, in this case, the USB 2.0 ports are also labeled as Wi-Fi. And that's because one of the main problems that ASIR has always had is its frequent disconnections and its limited Wi-Fi coverage. Do you remember the small USB connector I showed you a moment ago? Well, it's a signal amplifier that we just need to plug into the corresponding USB port to enjoy greater Wi-Fi coverage. And finally, on the last side, just like with Acer, we find four 12 volt power connections to power devices such as cool cameras, mounts, etc. And a DSLR connection to be able to use reflex cameras or mirrorless cameras with Stella Vita. As for connecting the device to our tablet or mobile, it's done exactly the same way as with Acer. We just need to download the Stella Vita app from the Play Store or the Android Market, connect the device, and after hearing a series of beeps, we'll see the Stella Vita Wi-Fi network appear among our available networks. We connect to it using the password found on the device's label 345678, just like with Acer, and then we'll be ready to connect our device through the app. One of the things that users of Stella will probably appreciate the most is having an interface in Spanish, something that Acer never implemented. And having reviewed this new Stella from TopTech, let's head out to the field and put it to the test. and all the accessories that I'm going to use during this astrophotography session are installed on the telescope. As you can see, for this session, I'm going to use the ZWAM5 mount, which I'm almost certain Stella will recognize without any problem. 
As you can also see, in this session, I'm going to use the SB Boni SB 503 telescope, 102mm, 700mm focal length f7, and we're going to use it at f7. It's native focal length with a 1x flattener, which doesn't give us any kind of reduction. ZW EAF focuser, auto guiding system with a ZW ASI 290mm camera. And the new thing for this session is that I'm going to use as the main camera an SV Boni SV705C. A camera that I've already reviewed on the channel. I'll leave the link to the video where I review this camera here. What's interesting about this camera is that it's mainly a planetary camera, but it uses the Sony IMX585 sensor, a sensor that's becoming quite popular lately because you could say it's a hybrid sensor, one that will give us good results mainly in planetary astrophotography, but is also delivering excellent results in deep sky astrophotography. In fact, brands like ZW have even decided to release a cool version of this camera. In this other video, which I leave here and encourage you to watch after this one, you can see how I was able to achieve excellent results with this camera, both in planetary astrophotography and during a deep sky astrophotography session. So with everything set up, let's start the session with the Stella Vita. And the very first thing is to do a polar alignment. Let's see how Stella Vita performs when it comes to polar alignment. Well, the first thing is to connect to Stella Vita. And as we can see in the Wi-Fi section, we are already connected. Connected. So the next step is to open the Stella Vita app, which we have right here. All right, as you can see, we're already connected to Stella Vita. Let's connect all the accessories. We go here to this gear icon. And the first thing we'll do is connect the mount. In this case is the ZWAM5, which I have connected via USB. So we select this here. Now let's tell it to scan. Okay, finally. The mount is now connected. It took a little while, but there it is, recognized. Let's connect the main camera. As you can see, it's already recognizing it. It's the SV Bunny SV705C. Let's click to connect it. There we go. Let's tell it we're working with a focal length of 700 millimeters. Otherwise, it won't work for us. Let's connect the guide camera, which is the ZWASI 290 millimeters. Let's set it to work at a focal length of 120 millimeters, which is the focal length of the guide scope, and we'll leave everything else as it is. Let's configure the electronic focuser, which is the ZWEAF. We have it right here. Let's connect it there. It's already recognized. It's even recognizing for us now. The position is currently in. Let's set the standard backlash of 30, if I remember correctly. That's what I had configured before. And over here for the mount, I had forgotten to enable the meridian flip. This is important because if the object we're going to photograph reaches the meridian and I don't have this enabled, the mount could keep rotating and end up colliding with the tripod legs. So for now, the configuration of the different devices is done. So far, it has recognized everything perfectly. Let's see if we can start with the polar alignment. With this initial configuration of the TubeTex Stella Vita done, let's begin the polar alignment. The first thing we need to do is properly focus the camera. Let's take a picture. All right, that's our first image. It's completely out of focus. So at this point, what I'm going to do is run an autofocus. There it is focusing. It's quite interesting because it seems to me that the Stella Vita is much faster at focusing than the Asi Air. All right, so now we have the focus point. Honestly, it did it really quickly and nailed it. It used that star as a reference and gave us a value of 3.5, the smallest value we got on the focus curve, and now the equipment is focused. Okay, so from what I see, to get to the polar alignment option, we have to go here and select the mount. And from what I can tell here, we have the polar alignment option. If I click here, it gives me the longitude and latitude values of my location, the date, the focal length of the main telescope. It's capturing an image, it says applying plate solve, and now it's rotating the mount. Capturing second image, it rotates again. Capturing third image. All right, and uh, here we already have the corrections we need to make. I'm going to press here on auto so that it refreshes constantly. Okay, and now all that's left is to start moving in azimuth and altitude until we manage to get the dot into the center of the crosshair. As you can see, the polar alignment function of this Lavita is quite a bit simpler, much more basic, you could say, but it works exactly the same as ACES. It also has an interesting feature. 
In this case, it doesn't launch little rockets like ACR does, but it makes a series of sounds as we get closer to the most precise polar alignment point. Well, the equipment is now aligned to the pole, and from this point on, we're ready to point the telescope towards the area we want to photograph. In this case, I'm going to use this function we have here, which is similar to the Stellarium function that ASIR has. And for this session, with this camera, this sensor and this telescope, I had planned to photograph a galaxy. And right now, at this time of year, we still have the galaxies within reach. From Ursa Major, specifically Galaxy M101, Galaxy M51. Notice the field of view that this setup gives us, for example, with Galaxy M101. Let's see what the field of view would be like with M51. Here we have M51, and it actually seems that I like the field that this sensor gives me with M51 even more. So let's send the equipment over the ascendant center. Okay, it has performed the first place solving. Now it's centering it in the frame, and the target is centered. There we have it. Incredibly, in just two moves, we've got it. Well, as you've seen, we already have the object centered in the field of view. The plate solving worked perfectly. So the next thing I'm going to do is start the auto guiding. Let's come over here. Here we have the guide camera. Let's take the auto guiding. Here it is calibrating. But is this in focus? Okay, it says it's calibrating, but for now I can't see anything. In the image field here, we have the histogram. We can bring up different options to the desktop. It seems like it has found a star. It's showing me a star profile there, but for now, I still can't see anything on the screen. Okay, so it's calibrated. I still don't see any stars, but it's auto-guiding. And well, it's giving me a total error of 1.55, which is quite high for now. But I hope that little by little, that error will go down. All right, now that it's auto guiding, let's start a five minute exposure and see what kind of image we get. One detail I don't really like about this Lavita from what I'm seeing now is that I just set up a five minute exposure, 300 seconds. I've started it and, you know, for now I can't see any information on the screen telling me either how much time has elapsed or how much time is left for the exposure. I just see this little circle progressing, but it would be a nice touch if Stella Vita included a timer so you could know exactly how much time has passed and how much is left for the exposure. All right, so here we have that first light, that first capture from the Stella, and I have to say it looks fantastic. What I don't know is why I'm seeing the image in black and white. That's something I really don't understand. Why am I seeing the image in black and white? Because this camera is color, it's a color camera, but this first capture looks incredible. Look at that field, look at the detail in the galaxies. Spectacular, I truly cannot say anything else, it is truly spectacular, but I still unfortunately see it in black and white. And honestly, I genuinely can't quite figure out precisely why I'm seeing the image in black and white. So what I'm going to do now is start a photo sequence and sincerely hope that it saves them in full color because the camera really is in fact a color camera. If you by any chance know why it's showing me the images in black and white, please do let me know in the comment section. I would really truly appreciate it very much. And uh, once we have all these meticulously configured, as you can clearly see out of focus on the startup, out of focus with every two degree temperature change, and posting auto guiding during auto focus once we have all these completely set up, here we also have the number of shots. We want to take 24 shots of 300 seconds each and so on. We go over here, click on the object we're photographing, and down here we have the option to start the capture. Here we can finish configuring the last details, for example, to have the Stella Vita turn off when it's done, to have the mount return to its starting position and so on. So we press Start Capture. There it's starting the autofocus routine. Well, I've run into the first problem, which is that for some reason, when it's supposed to start the autofocus routine, it doesn't. It moves the autofocus. It says it's performing autofocus, but it doesn't move the focuser. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to do a manual autofocus. And uh, well, here it doesn't perform autofocus either. I don't really know what's happening, but I can get it to do autofocus. It just gets stuck and I don't get an image either. 
I'm going to restart the focuser. I'm going to come over here, stop the electronic focuser, and turn it back on. Let's go over. Here, within the dedicated focusing section of the equipment, I am now going to carefully move the control, and as you can clearly observe, it indeed appears to be actively moving. Yes, the focuser mechanism is undeniably in motion, however, for some inexplicable reason, despite its movement, it has not yet achieved the desired and precise focus. Let's have it do an autofocus. All right, let's stop this, move the mount to the home position and restart everything. Okay, now we have an image. I had to turn the camera off and on again to restart it. These kind of errors, I don't know if they're due to accessory incompatibilities with Stella Vita, but honestly, they're a bit annoying. I have to say it, let's try to focus again, although now it seems the image is pretty well focused, so I'm going to take advantage and start the sequence directly. Well, this is starting to get quite annoying with the camera. It seems that, once again, the main camera is failing. It looks like it takes the photo, but the photo never actually downloads. Capture error. Now it seems to be working. Okay, it looks like you found the galaxies, but this isn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to go specifically to that frame and center it. No, there's just no way. Let's park the mount again. Well, unfortunately, I have to say that even though I was really looking forward to reviewing this product, the Taptek Estela Vita, because of that possibility of getting out of the ZW ecosystem and being able to use any kind of device, especially a camera like this one that I brought to this session, the SB Bonnie SB705C, a camera that, as I mentioned, uses the IMX585 sensor, which I was really eager to use with this tube to photograph galaxies and other smaller objects. Unfortunately, I have to say that uh, as of today, this product, in my opinion, is not finished yet. It still has a lot of development ahead. And, well, when we step outside those usual accessories, those more common camera school cameras, cameras that are more established in the market, regardless of the brand, but more well-known cameras, maybe this product works well. But when we move away from that type of product, we run into situations like the one I encountered tonight. At the beginning of the session, everything seemed to be going quite well until I started the sequence, the autofocus system froze, and after that, there was no way to get anything to work. Especially because the camera seems to connect at first, it shows up as connected, but when we try to capture an image with it, the capture fails immediately. I disconnect and reconnect the camera, and it seems to start responding. We can get some images with it. But when I try to autofocus again or do any plate solving, it fails on us once more. So no, from my point of view, this product still has a lot of development ahead of it. And although it aims to be a direct competitor to Sidbo with its Asia, Asia is a product that doesn't give us any problems at all, and we have complete assurance that we'll be able to carry out our entire astrophotography session without any issues. And the reality is that uh, Stella Vita, in a situation like this, can leave us completely stranded and without an astrophotography session. As you can see, not everything always ends with a happy ending, and this is the best example of that. I hope at least this video has helped you understand what stage of development this product is in. We see each other again next week with what we love most, photography and nature here on Natural Portraits. Goodbye.